my name is Michael, and right behind the camera is Connor. Can you spin that around? Yeah. Hey. All right, we're trying to start a channel. Well, not really. We're just kind of goofing around with it because we're working outside. Uh, called Mini Man Projects, and uh, Connor has put up a couple of different videos. Uh, anything from paintball to some watching a big old fat guy on a mountain bike, and now we've been working on this goose and a half for a while. So this is our M35A2. It is a Whistler Turbo Multifuel. We believe it to be a 68 based on data plates. Uh, a lot of times those have been changed. You can't be absolutely sure. You're showing about 55,000 miles, and same thing. You just can't be absolutely sure. The military did change those out quite a bit. So just looking around her, we purchased this out from a nice gentleman over near Nashville somewhere. I'm not going to tell you where. Uh, and he had purchased it from a uh, construction company, a road crew construction company, where they had painted it yellow. Yep, I mean it. They painted it yellow. It really did. It was not quite school bus yellow, but it sure was yellow. So we've gone back and done the best we can and kind of shot this thing more of an army green. We did the color ourselves. We really didn't know that you could buy buy the exact color until we started seeing a gentleman on tactical repair who said, oh, you can go to Rapco and get this color, and it's perfect. <laughs> but when we matched it to our M105, the M105 is stock, and it actually looks about perfect. So somehow we did a good job. But uh, I'll show you some of that yellow that's still hiding somewhere on this truck. But we have gone ahead and probably against uh, people's recommendations, promise I can do this. <laughs> we actually stripped this bed really well because it was showing some surface rust. Stripped the bed really well. We did core seal and then we laid down some bed liner on top of it. So, so far that's holding up quite well. She is a really solid truck. Surprisingly free of rust. It does have some surface rust on the springs and a few other places. But the no holes um, that we have ever, that we've ever found and everything seems to be solid and in great shape. Uh, Connor, if you don't mind, sneak down here and take a look under this wheel, behind this wheel, and you'll kind of get an idea of what color she was. And that one over there. So, yeah, absolutely. She looked like a school bus uh, from a foreign country. We won't say which one. We're going to edit that out. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. So, anyway, what we're going to be doing today is a brake repair. Uh, did I already talk about this? Brake repair? Not yet. Not yet. Um, what happened is a couple weeks ago, we were doing a little routine maintenance out here in the driveway, and we kind of noticed that the left front wheel was sticking. So immediately, kind of like a brake drag. So there's, there's one thing you don't want to go wrong with these trucks in any way, is any kind of brake failure issue. So uh, last Wednesday, we got all the parts from Big Mike's. Thank you very much. Uh, we got some wheel cylinders and a few other, you know, actually all new brake hoses, and I'll kind of show you those in just a minute. And we pulled that off, and sure enough, that wheel cylinder was completely frozen. I am very surprised that we did not have problems on that on some of our numerous five-mile trips, but we got very lucky. So when we got inside, I was really worried about brake shoes. I was extremely worried about axle bearings and everything else. But when we got in there, with the exception of the wheel bearing, everything was in great shape. And I mean great shape. Wheel bearings look fantastic. Uh, the brake shoes actually look good. They didn't look like they glassed over or anything. So we were thrilled with that. Uh, going through a little bit on how we're going to do this. Oh, her. From Big Mike's, we got some of the world's most expensive brake fluid. All right, we did get new wheel cylinders, and I'll pop those out in a little bit. I don't want them to get dirty. And we bought a whole new set of brake hoses. This is a, a massive failure point on these trucks. When these brake hoses get worn, they can actually split. I've had that happen in a truck. It was not fun. Going down a busy highway and having to pull over and think you had to use a jersey barrier as a brake, not fun, not fun. But later on when we get closer in, I'll actually show you some of the, where I'm talking about the cracking. All right, we use a lot of Harbor Freight tools here, okay? Um, and we like to double up on everything. So you'll see four jack stands for this front axle, and you'll probably see two more if I get any more scared up there. We do have uh, just kind of set selection of tools going on over here uh, just to keep us moving forward. We're going to be using our uh, air impact wrench to get the wheels and tires off. You'll probably see some grunting and groaning and maybe a freaking cuss word or so. We'll see. <laughs> we had several of them last week. But anyway, we're going to kind of stop and start this video just as we go through just to set up different things so it's not a two hour long, three hour long video. But, and caveat, 
We are not professional mechanics in any way. So if you see something we're doing wrong, please don't chew, chew us up in half, because I guarantee you there will be. Uh, this is a fun project for us, and we take it very seriously. But I've never been to mechanic school. He's never been to mechanic school. We've just got a lot of shade tree stuff going on. So we'll talk to you in just a few minutes once we get our, the jacks in position, okay? This is our jack situation. We've got a Daytona 3-ton here and another jack stand. Th these actually hold the weight, but these over here are kind of as emergencies. So just in case, if it does fall, they will kind of help out, kind of. All right, once again, folks, we're continuing forward with the project. One of the great things about this side so far is it's not locked up because last week the other one was scary so we're going to be taking this off with our uh <coughs> you want me in there <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah. all right now this is an inch and a half socket and it takes a bit on this side it is lefty loosey ready tighty on the other side is exactly the opposite but me saying that is difficult don't ask me why <laughs> Yep. Hey, grab that magnetic tray so we know where everything's going. Obviously, there's nothing light about these tires at all, because everything's five times heavier on one of these than it probably should be, just because of what it was used for. Um, but this uh, air seems to do a very, very nice job of this. We're back a little, we're still collecting some of this stuff that we're going to be using like shop tools and nitrile gloves. Let me just repeat that. Nitrile gloves. My son forgot to use them last week. And boy, does that cause a messy problem. Yep. So I don't have the professional way to get this wheel off except manhandle it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. You ready, Connor? Yep. Just give me a tug on that tight. And then I'll catch it. All right. Got it? Yep. Let's roll this forward. By the way, again, there might be some grunt and groaning because these are not light. All right, look at that. I got you. I got you. All right. Throw this thing up against the wall. Whew. Every time we move one of these, we realize how heavy this truck is. We are back over here. Now these axles, and I'm not a pro at describing these or anything, okay? In order to get this drum off, we actually have to go through all the bearings. And I'm going to have Connor start removing the center cap there. What size did you use last time? Three quarters. Three quarters. And just use, use the air, the air hammer. It was way easier. Whew. Connor will probably speed through and uh, speed this up as we go through, just so you guys don't have to watch all of the boring parts. Yeah. I don't know about any of you guys, but in my projects, everything seems to migrate where it does not need to be. So <laughs> we'll look down and all of a sudden one stud is not there. You'll be looking for a particular screwdriver and it won't be there. So, as we found out last week, there's a gasket that goes around here. It is a paper gasket. Um, thanks to, what's his name on Tactical Repair? Garrett. Garrett on Tactical, tactical Repair kind of let us know via his great shows that uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be there. I did go ahead and order some from um, Big Mike's Motor Pool. So, we got them in, so we're absolutely going to use them since we've got them. All right. Bust out the nitros. Bust out the nitros. Yeah, absolutely. This is the part where putting on rubber gloves is a good thing, fellas. If you don't have them, you're going to be the dirtiest human being on the face of the planet by the time we're done. I can get that. Right, so then, in case you don't know, grease is not only grease and sticky, but it's also really smelly, and it seems to migrate anywhere. It just blows my mind how, how that stuff just moves around. You clubs are... Tight. <laughs> You're way too tight. So Connor's gone to get a flathead screwdriver, which we found last week was about the best way to uh, do this. There are lock rings right here. 
that you have to unbend in order to, is it unbend? I guess it's unbend. In order to get this outer um, nut off. Still struggling with these gloves. Alright, that one's broken. Try again. You gotta be really, really careful with these guys. I mean, they do hold on quite tight and it's easy to break them. Um, and you don't want to break those because if you do, you're calling Big Mike and getting a couple, uh, another replacement. So, and you certainly don't want to stand out here with your axles open for a week. And not that Mike takes a week, he doesn't. He actually ships out parts almost the same minute you order them. Um, but we definitely don't want to take, leave this axle open for a week. And I really hate these gloves. You have no idea. <laughs> ah! As soon as I get one, see? Gotta love them, right? That might just be because it's the Harbor Freight version. <sighs> you seem to be powdering with what they need. Powder. <sighs> and, they're, like I said, they're at least two sizes too small for me. It's all that fat and beer that I drink. Nah. Yeah. I think it's going into my fingers. I'm about to give up on these. Balling it. Not. <laughs> I work in retail. Nobody needs to see that kind of, that kind of grease under my nails. Uh, can we get something better than the blanket? <laughs> yeah, sure. How did we do this last time? <laughs> I can't do these gloves. <laughs> I'm just gonna wear my old pair of mechanics gloves. Don't get dirty, probably. Get your gloves on. Yeah, you got nice ones. Hey. Well, that was probably the most embarrassing part of this video is the fact that I couldn't get a pair of gloves on. We bought the wrong ones. Oh, why am I using this thing? Come on, you. Work with me, yeah. Work with me. This gun doesn't work with me. Barely. Telling us for sure, they don't like coming off. No, they don't. Want me to jump in there? Yeah, probably. Alright. Let me give it a tug. We always want to be careful when we're going in here. Obviously, there's very, 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 very uh, sensitive bearings in here, and they are fragile. So, when we do this, yeah, here. Uh, yeah, let me give it a shot. I'm trying to be gentle. Yeah. I'm going to use that. Oh, big four inch suspension right there. Every time I get up and down, I'm going to be grunting and growing, aren't I? Boy, they popped a lot of those tabs down, didn't they? I mean, they're only the few bins right there. Neither one of them want to move. Yeah. I don't think that has anything to do with well, it. might have something to do with that flare. <sighs> These nuts have a flare on one side. That flare goes to the inside of the axle. <sighs> Seems real smooth. You're gonna need a three inch socket for these actual knots. Yeah. It's definitely a unique one. The outer ones we should be torqued really, really well. Uh, the inner one, they almost come free, just good friction. I'm not sure exactly how that works. I'm sure there's a fancy name for it that I don't know. Let's line that uh, 
Lots of shop towels, guys. Lots yep. of shop towels. Let me see if it's still recording. Are you? Yep. Uh, why do you do that? We're just doing all we can to keep these bearings as clean as possible as we take them out. We will be adding some substantial grease to them as they go back in. Um, not doing a full repack. Got it? Yes. These things are just about impossible. Here I go. <laughs> the ones I couldn't get on. Next one probably won't even need the breaker bar. We'll probably just reach yeah. in there with a the socket and give it a spin and it'll come right out. Because as we understand it, when it went in, it was torqued to 50 foot pounds and right. backed off a little bit, and then the outer nut was cranked down to 100, 150. 150. 150. So, this nut is long winded, just letting you know. And when we, uh, we watched uh, Garrett on tactical repair, he said the same thing. This is kind of what we should expect to see when we get in here, just in a nut nice and loose. Um, I'm sure, sure he has a very technical term for it. The guy is amazing. He knows just about anything about these trucks. And there's our first bearing. That's good, man. You got it. Come out. Yeah. There you go. Right, make sure it goes down in the tray properly. Right. This one was backwards as well. All right. Well, let's put it in correctly this time. Now we're going to wiggle this drum cylinder. And that's going to move this out of race or bearing to help it get out of there. All right, I'm going to move here. Got it. Perfect. That bearing is in perfect shape. It really is. Spin it around, see if there's anything going on. Nice and smooth, no grit. Yep. Just okay. like the other one. All right, we do. It do, does need some packing, so we're definitely going to pack the grease in here. Now step back if you don't mind, Carter. These things are 60 pounds worth of dead weight, fellas. So, and I'm talking dead weight. I actually don't like to stand anywhere near the front. Just in case my old butt decides to drop it. Which probably will. Well, I was a little bit more stuffed than I thought it was going to be. Uh, kind of wiggle. Alright, we're going to pause this video for a few minutes. While we tackle this, uh, while we tackle this brake drum, it does seem really free. It's just, I'm sure it's just hanging up on those brake pads up right there. There we go. Right. Here comes that 60 pounds of dead weight. Uh, uh. All right. Perfect. Uh. There we go. We'll lay that down so we can inspect it, clean it up here. The inner surface just seems perfectly smooth, just like the last one, which was surprising considering it was locked up. Um, obviously, a lot of brake drum dust, which I'm going to blow out here in a bit. And uh, just kind of clean it up with yours and my favorite tool, Connor. Brake cleaner. O'Reilly. Brake cleaner. Buy this, buy the case. It'll save you $12. So, <laughs> and we do, we do have a lot. How's that grease look down in there? I mean, it's chunky and it's kind of cracked, but there's like a whole a, a, like whole section just missing. So. All right, welcome All right, back. So right here is your adjuster for the um, for how I don't know what to call it. Um, it's your brake adjuster. Okay, yeah. so as it moves forward, you're actually pushing the brakes out. As you turn it to back the other way, obviously it's going to push the brakes. Uh, back in but I'm going to show you what it looks like you can probably see how those brake shoes are moving all right and then once it gets to right there that's how we want them to all the way out so that's going to be all the way out and that helps us remove 
um, the, the wheel cylinder. But if I went just a little bit further, like that, it pops the whole assembly in. And then, of course, we get brake fluid on us. So we want these out as far as we can get them in order to get the wheel cylinder out. And there. Right there. All right. I will say a quick warning. Your brake shoes might has it have asbestos in them. All right. Good morning again, folks. Here we are, uh, day two, after we found that wheel cylinder. This is just such a mess. Uh, we decided to go in and uh, clean out the brake line. And unfortunately, the hard brake line that came down was completely stripped out already. So we had to get to Big Mike's one more time and pick up another brake line, which he got to us almost immediately. We do appreciate that very much, as always. So we're going to be putting the new wheel cylinder in, re-greasing uh, re these bearings here, and just moving forward to get this thing put back together. And here we go, the wheel cylinder, we got a banjo bolt, then we got the brass, uh, whatever that thing's called. Washer. <laughs> Another banjo bolt, and that goes right in here. And we'll be tightening up everything a little later, because we are going to insert this through the rear view. As it goes, it's a little stubborn. You can edit that out later. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Definitely don't want to cross thread these. This one just is not wanting to thread for me. There she goes. There, there she goes. There we go. All right. Like I said, we're going to leave this fairly loose so that we can slide it between that uh, and out the back. And if you tighten it up too much, it'll get jammed and you just won't be able to do that. So the brake cylinder goes in, as, as we can see, we've already got the pins in. We've got those lubricated just a little bit with brake fluid so that they slide in easy. And they're gonna go over these notches, which is not the easiest thing to do, but it is doable. So, so just be careful not to, uh, well, let, me, let me just try this a different way. Hey, 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 awesome. Didn't we compress it? Yeah, I, th I think we did. I think we compressed, the uh, got the brake, um, the brake the wheel cylinder in first uh, so what i thought we did was we compressed it with the pins in, and then we put it in and then we yeah what i thought too so like push it on the ground yeah. yeah there we go my son is way smarter than me as i do this stuff nope he reminds me of what's right and what's wrong nope thankfully my dad's much smarter than yeah. me and we get that in there all right that's a little bit better thank you connor nope quite helpful this can be a little bit of a pain to get in there but once you get it locked in it's not bad at all yeah okay. that way well, uh, yep and he reminds me one more time the brake shield okay Let me brake go. shield has to go over can you clean that with brake fluid I've got some right here I went in and cleaned this up really nicely with uh, with brake fluid just to make sure there's not a b whole bunch of brake dust in there. Granted, it'll come back pretty quick, but it's to be expected. All right, might as well put a little bit, a little bit of hefty dad on it. All right, so that's that. All right, I think we should go ahead and put that new brake line in All right. first. Let me go grab that big yeah. old nut. Let's get that done first. That might actually be in here. So as I mentioned, we had a completely stripped out brake line. So down on the internet with Mr. Big Mike, and he sent us one. Came right in, obviously. It won't open, but it came in. I ordered on a Sunday and had everything by Thursday. Got my shipment notice on Tuesday or uh, Monday or Tuesday. So, I mean, listen, you order from him, you get it almost immediately, and you get the right part every time. So it's really impressive. Really impressive. Take that cap off. I do one at a time, taking that cap off. Now this actually. Goes all the way back up behind your shock. I'm sorry, behind the spring. 
Just a little bit of a bend to get it exactly where we want it because it's not going in quite right um, and it's easy to cross thread that thing and we certainly don't want to do that so I'm just gonna nudge it just a little bit I think that might do it be careful it didn't want to thread at all and obviously you can't really tighten this down too much uh, that that's just brass so it will absolutely just strip right out so I'm just gonna get just a little pressure on it boom I think do believe we've got it nice and solid we've got it to where it comes through down here it's not pinching anywhere so yeah success <laughs> yay so while we got the wheel cylinder in Connor we're gonna need the uh, the next brake line all right it's grease time we're gonna start with that inner bearing and just absolutely cover her up pack her in as I'm doing it make sure get grease all the way down in there right what are you laughing about what are you laughing about Nothing. huh Nothing. And then I'm just gonna you want some grease I do go ahead start greasing that axle shaft <laughs> we're greasing the axle shaft that's what she said that is exactly what she said. And we are loading up. Does not hurt to put do too much grease on these. <laughs> oh, stay off my hands, man. You're gonna be covered in it. Now I'm sure, guys, that you're out there saying you missed a step, and well, we probably did, just because we're not total mechanics. But I've done wheel bearings before. Just getting these bearings off is kind of a pain. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go heft the drum because it goes on next and boy let me tell you folks I'm not looking forward to that because that is just absolute 130 pounds or not I think it's 60 but it's completely dead weight and it doesn't want to do anything to help you obviously obviously well, I clean it I can't believe I forgot to do that there's a lot of old grease in that hub too fellas and I totally forgot to take it out last week I think we were just so frustrated over that line that broke um, that uh, <coughs> we just completely missed it 
So I'm going to clean out that inner hub real quick. We'll get it back on. We'll grease that thing up real good. I'm going to need a, another can of grease, right? Uh, maybe. Uh, that's all right. I brought two more. And then I'm going to keep ordering. The, the grease we're ordering, we're having an order from O'Reilly's. And I'll just tell you, I have to order it one can at a time because nobody has it. So, and we're, we're just doing NLDI2 amber grease. So, not sure if it's the right one, but it's grease. We're cleaning it up real good, so it should not mix with anything. This is what we want. Oh, boy. Should be all right. I left a couple of lug nuts on this thing just to give me some something to support as I lift it up. In my opinion, this is normally a two-man job, for sure. But I got... My little man's been a little ill, so don't really want him lifting anything heavy. Cursory, cursory. Sorry, Connor. Uh, so we are very well greased here. We're well greased inside the hub. I'm going to curse a little bit here, so just stand by. Ugh! Okay, cleaned out all the brake dust I could get out of here. Got to be kind of really careful around that axle spindle, obviously. I don't want to cause damage there. <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right. I think that needs to be cleaned. This outer surface right here. So we'll get a good seal there. All right? Yeah. I'm going to put a little brake cleaner on a rag instead of spraying it in there. That is pretty well greased up in there. I'm gonna put that on and squeeze some out, which is fantastic. 50 foot pounds and a quarter off. So what I'm gonna do is something I learned from Tactical Repair the other day, and I thought it was really good, really smart, is to tighten this all the way up by hand, which is what I'm doing. Tightening, tightening, tightening. So that's hand tight and spinning this and going another hand tight and spinning it one more time and that's it for there uh where's can you hand me that torque wrench uh Marshall? thank you sir and then we are going to torque what are we going to torque it to connor 50 foot pounds and a quarter out yep so 50 foot pounds And I'm actually going to spin it again, just for good measure. And that's my 50. And then I'm going to go one quarter back. And that's going to put us, supposedly, right in that jungle zone. All right, Hunter, show them that. All right, this is a keyed nut a lock washer to hold everything in. The keyway is right there, and the warnings I've heard so far is to be really, really careful. Connor, you got plenty of grease on the back of that, uh, right? Uh, I got it. You have plenty of grease on the back of that, really greased up. And then if you tighten down too hard and there's no grease, you'll actually break um, that lock uh, piece that goes into that axle. So you got to grease it up really well. And this one looks like uh, one of the original, the originals. The new ones, apparently are super easy to break like as you go torque it up they can break and you'll hear it and that is not a good sound um, because if it breaks today i'm calling big mics because i totally forgot to order a, an extra one which is not good so we're going to go real slow on this with that next that next bolt 
Connor's going to screw that thing on, and we're tightening this one to what, 150 foot pounds? Yep. But we're going to do it nice and slow, because the last thing we want to do is break that key. And these things can kind of be a a beat a beat to start. <laughs> Got it started. Oh. We've got that thing well packed with grease, I think. I'm really happy about that. You got that in that keyway, right? Yep. Sure you did. Otherwise it wouldn't go on. Alright. First thing I'm gonna do is hand tighten it. Once again. I don't think this helps anymore because it's blocking that keyway for the all right here we go that was wish us luck do not break please they broke what? and that was it well maybe not maybe not maybe that's just a... yeah so what happens that that little that area that keyway has not slid yet I mean, so this, hasn't the, yet. this this right here, that yeah. area right there. I remember when I put it on, it was a little weird. So. Okay. All right, well, that really felt like it broke for a second. Okay. Again, going really, really slow. <clears throat> Get tired. That thing's bare. I'm at about 140 and 150. So we got lucky. Did not break. What I felt there actually felt like it did, and I was panicking, but we've got that good to go. And we've got a nice, smooth spin. Looks great. No brake binding. And Connor wants me to take off his gloves, which I'm kind of laughing at. I kind of don't want to. <laughs> All right, give me the back of those. All right, one, two, three. There you go. Oh. Kind of didn't want to. I really wasn't done with you with grease yet, by the way. I want to <laughs> Grease up one more thing for me, which is the, <laughs> which is the cover here. You have your little, uh... yeah. Hey, what? So far, so good. I don't think we need to grease it because there's just so much. I really on want them. to, yeah, just because you know, you know me and grease. You got plenty here. And and I saw something in there, so just. Here, just use one glove and just pack some grease in there. Ah, good. happy about that. I was like, oh no, we would have been another four days before I could get one. And that's one of the ones. What? Dude, lay that on the ground. My it's brain bad. does not like grease. My brain bad after 105 fever. Your brain So dad said, as he had put the drum on, he goes, curse, 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 fuck, fuck, fuck. He goes, you should edit that out. I'm like, that's comedic gold. I'm leaving that in. Yeah, I broke the gasket that goes on this thing, fellas, but well, we're going to use it anyway, just because I'm stubborn like that. All right, I want me to clean that surface again. this surface here before we put all this back on make sure we get a good mating surface between that gasket and that outer hub whatever you call it we call that thing hub, <laughs> hub cover 
So at this point, I think we're both pretty happy because we're going to be driving Big D here in just a few minutes. We'll take you for at the a other ride. side because we've never done it. Literally took us um, five hours. I'm gonna Yeah, five, six hours, because we'd never done it before, obviously. Yeah, this, this gasket is going to be kind of a waste of time, isn't it? But we're going to do it anyway. Here's, here's the thing. See? You ready? Ah. You know what? You're a genius. You're a genius. He's a genius. Don't I, tell him, though. It'll go to his head. Ow! Okay, I got the blood. <laughs> no good job is good without blood. Hey, by the way, I actually did get blood already. It's right there, but it's small oh, cool. now. I got it. Okay, so well, we need to find where the splines are. Mm. So just maybe pull those bolts out a little bit. I'll spin the wheel. There you go. Nope. Okay, okay. Spin the wheel. excited right now. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I really am. I hated this thing standing up here on blocks all week. Like she was injured. Trust me, I did too. That's hard down there. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I really did. I hated it. But it was absolutely a necessary repair. And once again, let me just reiterate it. If you haven't done it, fellas, Please get your deuce up in the air and uh, take a look at wheel bearings and you know brake cylinders. Okay. Ours were okay. terrible. What? Oh, okay. Got it. Ours were absolutely un unusable, really, for, for lack of a better word. It, we should have had a wreck. Up more. Ah, uh, you're pushing it backwards. Got it. Maybe it was a great idea. Yeah. All right, go ahead and zip them down. Just use a one setting. We don't have to torque these all the pieces. So. So next, we're going to bleed the brakes, and uh, probably going to turn that off, just that's pretty boring stuff, but we're going to get them bled out so that we can uh, take her for a ride. <laughs> 